Good morning. And welcome to worship at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. A special welcome to those who are worshiping with us this morning, not here in the sanctuary, but by watching our live stream worship or by watching the rebroadcast throughout the week ahead on local access cable. I want to welcome a special guest to our pulpit this morning. Today it is an honor and a privilege to have with us Pastor Deborah Lyinga. Uh, Pastor Deborah is, and her family, her husband, and her two sons are here uh, living in Minnesota in Owatonna. They are from Tanzania, and she knows Pastor Meg, who of course Pastor Meg Sander has so many connections in Tanzania. Um, they are here in Owatonna as her husband, Pastor Devore's husband is, is in the doctorate program at the University of Minnesota studying music education. And so they are living in Oatana and he's studying, working on now his thesis, his doctoral thesis. And, um, and then it gives the Pastor Devore a special opportunity then to do some preaching. She preached, the last time I heard her preach was at the Synod Assembly. She was there and preached at Synod Assembly this past year. Um, she preached in, I, I almost feel like it was about February or so. She was supposed to be here on a Sunday, and it was the one week we canceled worship because the weather was so terribly bad. And so I wanted to have her come back because the Global Missions Committee had wanted her to be here. And so she was on a Wednesday, but then worship was canceled. So we're glad you're back. And there's no blizzard today for us, so worship wasn't canceled. And so grateful that you'll be here. I'm going to have Pastor Deborah preach here um, at the microphone so that we make sure she's heard well. We did that when she preached the Wednesday in February. And she said, if you can't hear me when I start preaching, let me know and she will make sure she's heard. So Nancy Elmer in the back row, okay, you're going to let us know if you can't hear Pastor Deborah and she will um, speak closer to the mic. Our special musician this morning is Elizabeth Stern. Liz is uh, singing for us, and she's going to sing two songs. The first song she sings is a song she sang at the Spring USC at the School Talent Show, and it is the song she won the talent show with, so we're grateful to have her sing, and then she's going to sing as well um, later in the worship during the offering, I believe. So grateful to have you sing today. Thank you so much. Liz is going to be an eighth grader, eighth grader, and she's in our confirmation program. So thanks for singing this morning. In the week ahead, church council meets on Monday evening, and then on Wednesday evening this week, we have a different kind of event that I want to tell you about, and you're all welcome to it. It's called Dinner Church. We are combining our Wednesday evening meal and our Wednesday evening worship service together. It will take place downstairs in the social hall at the normal worship time of 6.15. And it's actually based on a tradition of how worship was held in the years following the resurrection and ascension of Jesus. Worship Christian, the first Christian worship services were often held at homes and oftentimes around the dinner table. And so we are going to um, have our meal around the dinner table and our worship around the dinner table. And I just want to say this, the sermon I preached this Wednesday for Dinner Church is not the same one that I'll preach then next Wednesday. So uh, the menu is scalloped potatoes and ham. There will be food enough for all, but if you are thinking of attending, if you could let Andy know either this morning after worship or at the church office in the days ahead, so we have enough places set for all. And I hope you'll consider trying this different kind of worship experience. Um, and I did it at my last church and we actually really all enjoyed it. So uh, it's something for all ages. This Wednesday at 6.15. The flowers uh, near the pulpit are from the Thursday funeral of Denny Zabel, the stepson of Edie Zabel. And our prayers are with the family as they grieve the death of Denny. 
Our prayers are also with the family of Dennis McNeil, whose funeral was held here at the church on Friday. And we also hold in our prayers the family of Roma Schrader, who died. Roma survived by her children, uh, Mary Alger, Arnie Schrader, and Jackie Voigt. And then we also include in our prayers today Lauren and Tanya Christensen, who were united in marriage here yesterday at Good Shepherd. Those are the announcements that I have. At this time, we invite you to rise as we sing together our opening hymn. It's in your red hymnal 671, Shine, Jesus, Shine. now with a confession and forgiveness as printed on the front of your bulletin. And we gather for worship this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we confess our sins before God and before one another. Lord God, forgive us for not investing your gifts wisely. We don't always use our time and energy wisely, often focusing on ourselves while ignoring others. 
we would rather be faithful and responsible. Forgive us for burying our talents and failing to do good work for all you have given us. Jesus has died for us and gifts us with forgiveness. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, trusting that we are blessed in Jesus, loved and forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. And then please join me as we pray together the prayer of the day. Loving God, giver of every useful and beautiful gift, you have made us shareholders in the Spirit and investors in the gospel of Christ. Encourage us in the ways that we speak and act and pray, that all may be used more wisely than our own wisdom could direct and more lovingly than the small resources of our compassion would allow. Amen. Please be seated at this time. And at this time, I invite kids to come forward for a children's message. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning, guys. You grew over the summer. Good morning. Glad to have you here. I'm not sure if your boys are coming in or if they're, you went to see them or if they're busy with what they're doing. Hi, Bexley. This summer, for kids' times, I have been having us visit different places here in the sanctuary and learning about them. And today I want you to stand up and come back here with me. Come over here and we've got to turn around, okay? And we're going to look at this piece of furniture right here in front of us, okay? Do you guys know what this is? You know what this is? No? Nope. I'll tell you the name for it in a second. But first I want you to think about what it might be used for, okay, before we focus on the name. What do you think we use it for? It's actually designed to be just like our kitchen table or our dining room table, right? Do you guys have one of those at home? Tables where you eat a meal, right? The only difference with this is our table here doesn't have openings where we can slide our legs in, right? If we had a chair up to it, it's solid. But that's what it is. It's a table for us, okay? So long ago then, the church had the altar back there, and then they said, let's have a table here in front. Now, what do you do at your table at home, whether it's in the kitchen or the dining room? What do you do at it? Eat, right? What are some of the things you eat? What do you eat at your table? What? Chinese food. You like Chinese food. What else do you eat at your table? Sometimes you might eat breakfast there, right? Lunch, you might have lunch together at the table, right? Okay, so what do you think we do at our table here at church? Okay, you read at it, yeah? Yep, because that's where I stood and read. Hi, how, how are you today? And what else do you think we do at our table? What do we think we do at our table? Do you think we do the same things at our table that you might do at your table? No, you don't? Well, let's go up there and see what's at the table. Let's come closer, okay? Now there's a book, and Abner said, read, okay? So we do read at the table, but let's look under here. What do you think this is under here? What do you think that is? Hmm? Bread, right? This is bread. And then we have over here something else. And do you know what this is? Wine. So what do you think we do with these? What do you think we do with these? We drink and eat, just like you do. What do you do at your table? Drink and eat, right? 
And so instead of your mom and dad feeding you at your table, who do you think feeds us at this table? God, because this is God's table. And God says, I want to feed you, and I want to feed you well, okay? And so he feeds us with bread, right? He feeds us with drink things, right? Juice and wine. And these are just a part of what he feeds us with. In this and through this, you know what else he feeds us with? He feeds us with forgiveness and love and hope. Now, do you think when your mama or your dad sit you down at the table and give you food, do you think they feed you with love? Yes, because you know what they want you to be? Strong and healthy and well-fed, right? And so when your mom and dad feed you, they said, I want to feed you up and fill your tummy up with food, good food for you, and with love, right? So at this table, it's who's feeding us? God. And God says, I've got food for you, and I want to feed you with food that gives you strength, right? To keep going every day as a child of God, but also with love, right? And hope and forgiveness. Because the hope comes with this. Someday, this is just an appetizer, and someday we're going to have a feast, and it will be God feeding us, and that feast will be in heaven. Okay? So this is just the appetizers, okay, that you get before you have a feast with God in heaven. Well, let's say a prayer, okay? And remember what you need to do with our hands? Take your hands, okay, and put them together, right? And who are we talking to when we pray? Yes, we're talking to God. So let's pray together to God. Dear God, thank you for feeding us. Thank you for feeding us with bread, with bread, and with love, and with hope. Thank you for feeding us this appetizer. Thank you for feeding us this appetizer. One day we will feast with you. One day we will feast with you in heaven. Amen. 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 Thanks for coming up. Don't know where, don't 
Please join me in reading Psalm 128 responsibly. Happy is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be happy, and it shall go well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Here ends the psalm reading. A reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 25. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents come forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over me, you, ha you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in a charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master saying to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in a charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, 
I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was as fried, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not snow, sow, and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and a gnashing of, gnashing of teeth. Word of God, word of life. Please let us pray. Precious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for entrusting us to be your servants in this world. Help us to be your faithful servants that we can use our resources, opportunities, and time for your glory. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. I am so happy to be with you today, with my family too. Uh, it was in February, as Pastor Mary said, I didn't come up here because of the big snow. <laughs> so they ca Pastor Mary canceled it and said, I think we, we didn't have our saves this Sunday. And I said, okay. <laughs> but she has a nice plan that Maybe we, we can have you in summer. And today I am here with my family too. Thank you so much, Pastor Mary. As Pastor Mary said, we are from Tanzania. Uh, and for me, my English is the third language. Yeah. Uh, the first language is my mother language, or I say our parents' language. And the second language is the Swahili language. This is the national language, so that it can help us to communicate at the old Tanzanian, I can say it. And English one is the third one, we can learn from the school. So the way I pronounced things is the different with you, you pronounce things or words. So you need to be careful listening to me what I'm talking. <laughs> Thank you so much. Coming to our stories today, I want to start telling you about the story of our family, my daddy's family. My, my dad was a pastor, but now he's retired. He grew up among the three brothers who were successful farmers. And when I'm talking about farmers, successful farmers is big different with farmers here. <laughs> Our farm is, is not big like yours here. If you have five workers in Tanzania, it means that you are successful farmers. <laughs> you, have, you have a lot. Yeah, so our dad was kind of this kind of farm. They have this kind of, of farm. Growing, they had a very good relationship, living together, my dad with his brothers, in the same compound. And although they have already married, but they tend to help each other, visiting each other and they have a time together. But things changed when my dad received a call to be a pastor. 
His brothers were so upset and mad at him. They thought and knew that he was going to be a poorest man in the family and be a burden to the family too. Their thinking was true though because pastors don't get paid enough in Tanzania. Uh, 2005 when I, I was ordained I started my salary with with not not much like like ten dollars yeah it's like ten dollars per month 2005 so you can imagine the time of my dad what kind of of money he received from the church of course in Tanzania I can say we don't have salaries for pastors it's just it's like a gift from what you get so almost pastors in Tanzania people they look on us like poorest one people who we don't have anything to compete with people to compete with other one so so you can imagine the time of my dad when he was working They also understand that my dad was to be working away from home, so he would not be able to take care of the farm. But my dad insisted that he wanted to become a pastor. After he was ordained, he was posted in a rural church. The family had nothing for food, means our family, except the ugali every day. Ugali, this is our Tanzanian food. This is the field corn flour. And this is common. All, always Emmanuel said, here it is it's like 99% of Ugali. <laughs> and me maybe it's 97 or 96, 95. So Ugali, this is the corn flour. Not sweet one, filled one. Flour. So you cook it on the stove and until it became hard you can do like this and eat with vegetables you can eat with beans you can eat with meat you can eat with different so what is changing the meal is just the vegetables but ugali there some they can eat from morning they can eat at the at the breakfast and some they can eat lunch and dinner, but the difference is just vegetables. So our family, we grew on this kind of life when my dad was starting a job. We as kids never had a new clothes. We walked with no shoes. While my uncles were rich, their houses full of food choices and their kids dressed nice. They have a different kind of food, they have a rice, and even the vegetable, they put oil to make it good. So, it's like, every weekend we wish to go there, so we can change our meals, but it was far. We cannot go there for every weekend. Their families afforded traveling to many parts of the, of the Tanzanian cities, or can I say countries, just for funny. They had nice, as I said, houses for our standard. They had many cows for milk and we have none. And they had many more things that we could not afford with my dad. Our family was starving. And my uncles has given up on my dad and all of us. They were given up. We don't care about you. We don't do anything for you because you decided to go that way and you leave all of this. They did not want to help him. They never cared not only of what we ate or not ate, but they never cared for strangers too or people who were surrounded them, people who were in need. 
they don't care about them. They assume that whatever happened for that people, it is because of their fault. It is because maybe they are less. They don't want to work hard so that they can get much as they have. However, my dad kept reminding them of being good people to keep what they have as they might need it tomorrow. He advised them to keep their money, to keep their money to the bank and send their children to the good schools. But it is always not easy for a rich to listen to the poor one. So they didn't listen to my dad. They said, what can you advise us? They told him, you don't know. You, 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 you know nothing. You don't have anything. One important thing was that although we had no much in our house, but our house was a happy place for us to live. It was a happy place for other people to visit. It was a place that people found peace, people found joy, people found comfort. It was a place of feeding the hunger with the small that we have. Whatever was available in our home. We welcomed different people and my parents trusting strangers who showed up on our door and knocked our door. Always we opened our, our doors for them. We always, always took our meals with someone new in our family. We didn't have a private in our house. We didn't have a private meal, or I can say the special meal, so that we can eat as the family. It's like every meal we eat with someone. And we enjoyed it. Many times, we as the children slept on the floor to give our guests our beds to sleep. I hated it when I slept on the floor. But now, I understand how our home was so special. For us as children, this life was frustrating. Our parents always ask us to do this and that to people in need. They ask us, do these things, even if we are not at home. Please, welcome people. Please give them food to eat. Please give them something what they want if it's available. Don't send them away as they can. They taught us to be patient and start hard if we wanted to be successful in our lives. Now, if you will ask me about what changed our family, I will tell you I don't know. But as I speak now, my parents' life has changed from worse to better. While those of his brothers are unskippable, they are so worse these days. We in the family go to education and we eat at least can take care of ourselves. While things are opposite to my uncle's homes, their children are thus around their homes. They don't have anything to do. And their farms now are not produced much as for the first time. It's like their life is so, so very hard now. They are so drunkness over drunkness. And they don't have any direction. And now it's like they, they're blaming my dad for a lot of things. You don't listen for us. You don't even help our children. You don't even do this and this. Something changed. So, when I was reading this text, I could not help remember this story. I could see the faithfulness and how productive my parents have been. In a parable, a wealthy man preparing a house 
preparing to have a long journey, he decided to entrust, entrusted, entrust three of his servants to keep his business running. With business, one has to take a risk and to be productive. Make a profit. So, he expected that they will be faithful to what they were given and provide him a good return on investment where he is back. The Bible tells us that two servants did as their masters expected. They were faithful and productive. And as we see, the Bible says, he was happy and he entrusted them with more authority and invites them to enter into his joy. But for the third servant, he was too scared to take a risk. He merely protected himself and decided to hide what he was given. He decided to keep it, what he was given, so that not to lose it. And his master was so disappointed on him, he was so mad, that he did not make a single profit. He is so bad. Of course, in this parable, Jesus is referring to what he expected from his disciples after he is gone. He expected them to continue doing Jesus' work and to be productive even in the difficult times. To be productive even when Jesus was not with them. He wants them to demonstrate their faithfulness and the wisdom to the masters until he comes. Even when their faith is tested, they need to be faithful. He wants them to take a risk and face a challenges so that they can produce more productive. Dear brothers and sisters, we can ask ourselves, what does Christian faithfulness and productive look like in our time? The Bible talks about the Lord coming back at the time what we don't know, but only God. But while he is away, he gives us a task to do. He gives us responsibility. He gives us things to take care of, things to develop and grow, things to make alive again and make a difference. He has entrusted, entrusted much to us so that we can do something in this world. As Christian, we are called to live a faithful life to ourselves, to our God, and to our neighbor. We are called to be an, an example of protector of the weak, those who are powerless and speechless, we are called to help them. We are called to speak for them. We are called to heal and feed those in need. We are called to cure the sick, to bless and welcome the stranger. We are the hand of God in this world. And he know that that's why he gives us something to do. Because he is not in this world now. So he gives us things to do because we are his hand in this world. We are with hand in this world to make people feel that they are loved. To make others feel that they are loved, they are free. They are safe. They belong.
And this though is the way, and this though the way we share with them, not only the word of God, but we share with them our places to stay. We can share with them the food to eat. We can share with them the shelter to cover their bodies. And this is the productive Christian life that God calls us to do. I understand that in this country, the immigration is the huge political agenda right now. And I'm not talking about politics here, but just to think as a Christian who is given a task or choice to make a decision, what can we do in this time? What can we do in this situation? Can we send them away? Can we let them suffer? Can we welcome them and show the, the God's love? This is just, just the way to think as a Christian. But as the human beings, many times we are not patient. You know, when I was reading this text, I was thinking, can I blame this, the last servant? to hide this money and just I reflect on myself and put in his place that what will I do if I was me because many times I'm so scared to take a risk many times and especially if something is new to me and I know maybe it is for you too. We are so scared to, get, to, to, to take a risk when we are doing something. And that way we sometimes miss opportunities and good things because of our fears. Or sometimes our desire overtake our ability to do good or right things. We find ourselves caught on self-protection all the time. A few months ago, I, have, I had a conference with some women in Good Earth Village. And we were sharing about how to love one another in this time and in this global world. In the discussion, many women showed that they don't even know their neighbors. For me it was, oh what? But it was, they were opened. They said, we don't know, we don't know each other. I don't know who is my neighbor. It is not that they want to be like that, they said. It is, it is not that we want to be like that, but fear of life. Some think, how can I go to my neighbor who I don't know? I might be risky. But what I believe with that, for those who truly love and are faithful to Jesus, they will always be eager to save others in any situation. They can take a risk. My brothers and sisters, the main point in this parable is about living the Christian life that saves one another. God give, gave to each one of us to prove ourselves according to our call. There are, are those who have found the joy, see blessing of saving others. They will probably tell you how joyful it is on adding a smile and hope to other person. God give us not only to protect, but to expand his kingdom. 
he entrusted on us to make of it for him and for others. If he entrusted on you and on me, that means our shoulders are strong enough to lift others as well. So they can see the level of our sight too. Therefore, be faithful on what God has given and entrusted on you. It is his hope that in the last day we shall all be welcomed to his glory when he came for the second time. Amen. We sing together now a hymn that's actually printed in your bulletin. It's to the tune of the Church's One Foundation. And it's on the inside of your bulletin entitled, Oh God, We Yearn for Safety. This time I invite you to rise and I invite you to join me on page 105 at the front part of your red hymnal where together we confess our common faith and our common belief using the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. This time I invite you to share the peace of God with one another.
Pastor Mary is attending a continuing education event this week, or she did. One of the many ways that your offering dollars are used is to not only provide for her ministry among us, but to pay for fine preachers like Pastor Deborah to come and lead our worship when Pastor Mary is away. Your offering dollars also help provide education events that enrich Pastor Mary's skills that she will bring back to Good Shepherd. Thank you for your gifts to make all this possible. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go. Gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. Oh, I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. Oh, I'm gonna let it shine. 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 time I invite you to rise and join me as we sing together offertory it's Jesus loves me and it is on 595 if you want Mindful of all that Christ has done for us, we now pray. We pray for the church and the world, and we pray for all those in need. Gracious our God, you bless us with talents, with gifts beyond measure. We give you thanks for all that you gift to us. May we evermore be wise and gracious in sharing all that you give to us. You gift to us so we can share with one another. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, we thank you for the love that you blessed to Lauren Christensen and Tanya Carlson, who were united in holy marriage here yesterday. Bless their commitment and their marriage. Lord, in your mercy. For all the saints who from their labors rest, 
We pray for those who grieve the deaths of their beloved, the saints who are now in heaven. We pray this day for the families of Roma Schrader, Dennis McNeil, and Denny Zabel, who have died and are now feasting at the heavenly table. Comfort those who grieve with the promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, you shower your people with hope and comfort and peace. Today we pray for those in need as we lift up to your care those who are in need, those who are hungry, those who are hurting, those who are lonely, those who struggle. Today we lift up in prayer Irene Niebuhr, Ray Harris, Bebo Getchell, and all those whom we name now silently in our hearts. Visit them with help, visit them with healing. Lord, in your mercy. Knowing you hear our prayers, we lift these things to you, God, praying in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood it shed for you, it shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Praying together the prayer that our Lord first taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God at this time. I invite you to be seated. Follow the directions of the ushers. All are welcome to commune. We will serve you a wafer, gluten-free is also available. We will pour wine for you. Grape juice is in the pre-filled cups. Come for all is ready.
please rise for a blessing? May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in eternal life. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is hymn number 881. downstairs and you are invited to that and our last word is go in peace serve the Lord thanks be to God